Iliad Africa also focuses on sourcing, distributing, wholesaling and retailing general and specialized building materials. The group has a market cap of 760 million rand and operated at a loss in 2011. Iliad has 93 stores, some of which are being rebranded as Buco or Bucco and a trading division. Is it Bucco or Buco? I think it's Buco. Buco. Do you know in terms of pronunciation? Of their uh, rebranding. Pronunciation is not one of my full <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps they need to go but on a big campaign so they can get it right. B U C O. All right, first of all, why the rebranding uh, well, strategy? Well, it's because they have an absolute plethora of brands. The one that probably you may be familiar with are things like Ferreras and Iliad as well, Knob and Knocker, a whole lot of different stuff. So they basically hoovered up lots of hardware and home improvement type of stores over the last decade and a half. And now the group, uh, after battling a little bit and uh, having some negative write downs and restructuring, Campbell's is another brand. They've decided to go with this rebrand, repositioning. Um, I don't really see a lot to recommend this one over the others, other than to say it's got quite a well established position in certain markets. Certainly in the Mpumalanga area, they seem to be quite big. So. Is, is that the strength here, that they've got perhaps better geography? Better geography, if I can put it like that? Uh, I personally don't think that's the strength. I think that could actually be one of their weaknesses in the most recent years, um, particularly to the market that they are exposed to, to the more contracting market. Um, and obviously the market that you're exposed to is aligned with your geographical exposure. Uh, that market took one of the hardest hits in the space. Um, I think that's what's really been dragging them down recently. Could it be a recovery story though? So the most recent results look very positive. You know, they talk about second half and second half, up, etc. Um, I think it's possible that they could be recovering. I'm not sure if it's going to be an explosion <laughs> of results. Um, but I think uh, the sector is starting to show a bit of life. But I'm tempted to say that could be a base effect. Now you've got a business banking relationship company holding, yes, 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 all ticked there. So for you, Iliad. For Iliad, is no, that correct? correct? No, that's correct. we've that's incorrect. got no. our facts wrong on that front. Let's move on yeah. to your association with well, Iliad. Well, none, but the other point about them that's slightly different is that they do run a credit book. Oh, no, I, I've got to apologize. Hang on, I've got to apologize. It was actually ticked, no, 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 no. I'm very blonde <laughs> and I'm losing my mind this evening. So that was I correct. apologize. All right. So you know, in the history of retailers, some of them want nothing to do with credit because, you know, therein lies dragons and danger. Others start funding a book themselves. So some of the businesses, including Ferreras, had a book. And so uh, for Iliad, this is one of the things that they then spread group-wise. Now, that can be a plus because obviously when the times are good, then you make more money from the financing operations than from the trading. So I think that could be something that they look to expand further. And as I said earlier, when we were talking about cash build, I think there's a great opportunity for somebody to do credit in the building supply and home improvement environment, as well as credit is done in certain of the other household goods like furniture environment. Let's bring into this discussion SPAs play in this territory, which is build it. And then obviously you've got mass mart with builders warehouse. What do you think of those operations within those stocks? I think those are good operations. I think that space, I think it's been proven that the low end rural market building material space is a good space to be in and it is going to become more competitive. Um, and even coming back to Iliad, in their general building material space, one of their best performers was the low end cash and carry building materials. So basically the, the cash build within that, that business. Um, so expect more competition. Into, yes. yes, look, on that, I think uh, build it within SPA is very similar to cash build. And I think that's a very big and growing part of the SPA story and one which one ought to watch closely. Builders Warehouse is smaller because MassMart is bigger. But what's great about them is that it's high end DIY stuff. So it's laughable what you pay for a screwdriver at Builders Warehouse, but they don't care because they know that those kind of idiot middle class people who want to do something on the Sunday go and wander around the Builders Warehouse and buy pliers and, you know, a bit of this and a bit of that. So I think that's a very high margin and positive part of the mass mart story, but we're not talking about it here tonight because it's not really a hugely, hugely significant part of the mass mart story. What will be the, the kicker for you in terms of absolutely starting to see traction? They're talking about their results looking better for Iliad. Right. What would be the signal for you to go in? I don't know if you would go in boots and all, but the signal for you to go into the stock. 
So sorry, just before I answer that, can I just touch on something that Paul said earlier in terms of credit? I think that's another driver within the industry. I think um, guys are accessing the unsecured lending space. We've seen a, an absolute uh, explosion in that space. Uh, and the micro, micro lenders have confirmed that some of that lending is going towards the building and material space. So that is actually taking place and that is going to be one of the underlying uh, elements of growth. Um, fine, so that said, then coming back to Iliad, um, the, the most recent results did show a turnaround, um, but one, uh, you know, one data point doesn't make a series. I'd like to see that carry on for another two halves. So you're saying you'd like to see traction for a longer period of time. There's not going to be one catalyst that's going to make you buy Iliad in the short term. No. Right, hot or not? Mm, I had a brief conversation with the CEO, Eugene Bierdeco, who seemed like a cheerful, jovial sort of fellow. So, you know, maybe he can pull something out the hat. But I'd also avoid for now and wait and see whether they really get some serious reorganization of the group, go and get costs down and build up a more sustained uh, profit track record. So not hot for me either.